closing it. Lock it in. Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Becky. We are registered dietitians that use functional approaches to whole body health, and we believe in the power of food as medicine. In today's video, we will be defining dysbiosis, going over some of the common signs and symptoms that your gut microbiome might be out of balance, and talking about how you can do a simple probiotic challenge at home to assess the state of your gut. Yes, when working with functional medicine, we're always looking to address the root cause of chronic illness. And often we find, just as Hippocrates said, all disease starts in the gut. And when the microbiome, which is 100 trillion cells of bacteria and yeast that reside in the body, when that's imbalanced or in a dysbiotic state, it can create a whole myriad of imbalance within the body. Absolutely. So just to unpack a few of the common signs and symptoms that might be a tip off that you're dealing with dysbiosis, I think the first one that I often think of is bloating and distension as well as irregular bowels. So if we are eating throughout the day and then seeing our belly get progressively more bloated toward the evening, that's a sign that there's something going on. We're having some over fermentation and you're literally like brewing beer in your belly. Yes, so you could have belching or heartburn or that bloating like Becky said. And then your bowel formation, when we take out the weight of water, the majority of that mass beyond the food particles that were not brought into your gut blood barrier, it's those food particles and the network of bacteria. So sometimes we can see osmotic flushing if the gut bacteria isn't right with loose chronic diarrhea or urgency. And we can also see chronic constipation if we don't have enough good gut bugs to move that fecal mass down. Yes, definitely both ends of the spectrum when yes. it comes to bowels. Another area of dysbiosis is mood. We can see impact on depression and anxiety as well as cognitive decline and brain fog. So our gut bacteria plays a role in our neurotransmitters. And if we're in a dysbiotic state, we make more epinephrine or adrenaline. That sends chronic fight or flight signals to your brain, which puts you in a survival anxious state. And then in the state of obesity or body fat gain, sometimes dysbiosis has something to do with it. It can play a role with blood sugar imbalance as well as driving cravings. And like the out of body sugar or carbohydrate craving is often a sign that your bacteria is not working in your favor. Yes, and to add insult to injury, when you eat refined processed carbohydrates, you're setting up for a more dysbiotic gut because we know high refined sugar feeds yeast overgrowth in the body. Another area of focus is dermatological tissue or your skin. So we can see even from babies when we're dealing with cradle cap that often trends with fungal issues and candidiasis all the way up through things like eczema, psoriasis, hives, and rashes. Your microbiome has an impact within the lining within your skin, and those irregular skin conditions can be a sign of dysbiosis, as can acne. Hormonal acne can be influenced by dysbiosis because dysbiosis can drive estrogen excess in the body, and then acne itself has bacterial influence. And then we can also see with imbalanced gut bacteria, immune dysregulation. So either a suppressed immune system where we're getting sick all the time, picking up every little cold, or seeing an overactive immune system in the case of autoimmune conditions. Absolutely, and I feel like that's a huge part of our autoimmune protocol, starting with the gut, because we can see conditions like multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, and so much more resolved when we get that gut from a dysbiotic state into an optimal state of symbiosis. Okay, so if this sounds like you, let's talk about what we do clinically um, to test the state of the microbiome. Yes, so if we're looking for a lab assessment, we'll often order a breath test if we're looking for SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, what's fermented in the upper intestines, and we'll order a stool test if we're looking at dysbiosis in the larger intestine. And this would be for more inflammatory bowel conditions or to really determine what positive, negative, and neutral strains of bacteria are in the body. Collecting stool, however, is both pricey and not the most 
enjoyable process to say the least. <laughs> so we use a probiotic challenge in our clinic which yields great clinical outcomes, is affordable and easy to do in the comfort of your home without dealing with collection. Yes, absolutely. So we would start with a bottle of our Restore Baseline Probiotic and we actually have this entire protocol linked on the protocol section of our website if you wanna follow along with the link down below. But you'll start with some baseline waist circumference measurements just using a simple tape measure around the belly button, first at rise and at rest for three days with no influence of the probiotic, just making note of the variance in inches from that rise to rest. And this particular formula is important to note because you do wanna use a 50-50 blend of lacto and bifido strains, and you wanna make sure that the probiotic that you're using is third-party test for potency and purity, so you actually know that you're taking live active cultures, and you wanna make sure that it's free of prebiotics. You wanna make sure that the probiotic you're using in this challenge does not have FOS or inulin because that can create a conflict of the outcomes. Yes, absolutely. So don't just use any probiotic off the shelf. Go and check out the Restore Baseline Probiotic and either order that one or make sure the formula that you're using at home is comparable. So, like Becky said, you're measuring your waist circumference at rise and at rest. Make sure you do at least the centralized area of your belly button. And if you bloat above or below, you could measure that as a secondary measurement. And like she said, we're looking for a variance as you work up your probiotic intake. So you're gonna take those first three days of measurements without taking the probiotic. Then at day four, you're gonna introduce one capsule of the Restore Baseline Probiotic. You will take one capsule at bed for three nights. Then you'll move up to two capsules at bed for three nights, three capsules at bed for three nights, and four capsules at bed for four nights, for three nights, excuse me. All of these are three day intervals. And so we start with 15 billion colony forming units in the single capsule, and you're working your way all the way up to 60 billion colony forming units. If you see that there is dynamic shifts in your waist circumference and it gets unfavorable, so you get more bloated, more fermentation as you work up the amount of potency of the colony forming units, then that shows that there's a battle going on in your belly and you are in a dysbiotic state. If you see no significant change in outcome in those measurements and also examine your bowel formation, your sleep, your mood, your other symptoms that we mentioned, skin changes, right? If those things do not change, including the waist circumference, then you're already in a symbiotic state and you can just use cultured foods as a daily basis and use a probiotic supplement to support you at times of immune stress or maybe high stress times, which could stress out that microbiome itself. If you see as you go up to four capsules an improvement, then that means that you were in a sterilized state and you would likely do better with our targeted strength probiotic, which has 60 billion CFUs in one single capsule and the same formulation of that 50-50 blend of lacto and bifido. So check out the worksheet that's linked in the protocol below because that will help you to keep track of that waist circumference as well as your signs and symptoms of dysbiosis throughout this challenge. Absolutely, it can be such an empowering tool to have both the concrete data on a quantitative level of your measurements as well as qualitative assessment and have that protocol of really knowing as you increase that probiotic how your body responds. Also, check out the links below to episodes of the Naturally Nourished podcast where we really do deep dives into the microbiome, the brain gut access, and we even covered my most recent gut cleanse and outcomes. So if you like today's video, please go on down below and subscribe so that you can stay on top of our cutting edge functional medicine solutions. Food is medicine, tips and tricks. <laughs> Why do we say tips and tricks? <laughs> <laughs>